Hello everyone, this is a casual fan. Okay, now first of all, let's have a look at the championship standings. Red Bull leads Mercedes by 40 points in the constructors, while Max Verstappen leads Hamilton by 18 points in the championship. The Steering Grand Prix this weekend, which was, well, for the lack of a better word, a boring and an uneventful race was also one of the most dominant wins for Red Bull and Max Verstappen this year. The young championship contender would storm to a comfortable pole and win the race in a rather unchallenged way. The way that makes me think that this year Red Bull might just be on its way to hand Mercedes its first loss in the hybrid era. Okay, before we talk about the reigning champions, first we need to have a look at the title challengers and a special mention goes to Max Verstappen, a driver that is at 23 years old challenging the 7-time world champion in a similarly paced car and beating him. Max Verstappen, as I mentioned earlier, is leading Lewis Hamilton by 18 points. And if we are honest, the gap would have been much bigger if it was not for the unreliability suffered by Max at Baku or even when Hamilton benefited from the red flag at Imola. Max Verstappen has been the driver of the season so far, with multiple drives worth recognition and accolades, and multiple scenarios where he has proved himself to be a step above Lewis Hamilton, be it at Imola where he induced an uncharacteristic error from Lewis or be it in other races where he has just not made mistakes. Now, even in the past, there have been these scenarios in Formula 1 where we have witnessed a certain changing of the guard in the sport. This season, with the way both Hamilton and Max have driven, it's starting to look more and more like the case where we are witnessing Max Verstappen taking over from Lewis Hamilton as the gold standard in Formula 1. Well, talking about Mercedes, throughout the turbo era, it has had one thing on its side. It has shown a capability to produce some of the best machineries ever in the sport. And more often than not, when you have a fast car, the other shortcomings that the team might have, they tend to get overlooked. Mercedes has been a winning machine but in many ways, it has been a winning machine because it has had the car to win by comfortable margins. The other aspects like the strategy unit and the operational aspects that play a key role in a contest where crucial tense can be the difference between winning and losing have arguably not been tested enough in the past to know whether there are any shortcomings that need to be ironed out. This year, however, it's starting to become more and more clear that in the heat of the moment, Red Bull seems to hold the edge over Mercedes when it comes to operational proficiency. Red Bull, on average, is better at pit stops than Mercedes. And after two strategic mistakes at Monaco and France, it is fair to say that Red Bull seems to hold the edge over Mercedes on the strategic front as well. And in a year like this, it could be the defining factor, as with Mercedes not having a car capable of being the better machinery all the time, the operational and strategic unit is the one that makes all the difference. And at the moment, Red Bull seems to hold the edge on that front as well. This past weekend at Austria, in what was a slightly shocking revelation from Toto Wolff, it was revealed that Mercedes have opted not to develop the 2021 car any further, and it will focus entirely on the 2022 Challenger. Now something like this would have made sense if Mercedes enjoyed a buffer in performance when compared to Red Bull. But in the current scenario where Mercedes has lost four races in a row, and at Austria, it suffered arguably one of its biggest defeats of the season. It just does not make sense. Right now, after the Styrian Grand Prix, Red Bull is comfortably the quicker car when compared to Mercedes. And it has all the momentum in the world on its side. 
had this stage with a car that on paper does appear to be a slower package than Red Bull. Mercedes is aiming to fight for the title without making any investment on its current challenger. In a way, even though Mercedes would try to amplify its chances for the next year's regulations, that would certainly be happening at the expense of this year. Now what that means for next year is a topic for another day, but for the 2021 season, this would significantly hamper Hamilton's chances of getting back at Verstappen after already trailing him by 18 points in a car that is average slower than the Red Bull. When you look at the rivalry between the drivers this season, then it does appear to be a tad too friendly. The drivers joke around during the press conferences and there aren't too many mind games at play and even the signature look of dejection and release of emotions after either winning or losing a race or a poll has been missing. In fact, the most emotion that we have seen in the last few races has been from Toto Wolff who has been quite vocal against Christian Horner this season. Now compare that to the title battle between Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel in 2018 and you see an entirely different dynamics as both the challengers lit went to war against each other and no opportunity to gain an advantage, be it the track or off it was lost. Every loss and every victory seemed to mean a lot to both the drivers, especially Lewis who was peerless that season. Fast forward to 2021 and it does appear that something is missing. Lewis and Mercedes were quick to accept defeat at Austria, but the necessary urgency that should have been there after losing four races in a row was just not there. Now there could be multiple theories behind it. This could be because of a sense of complacency that has developed in the Mercedes squad or a matured approach to the championship this time around by Hamilton or on the contrary a case where Hamilton with seven world titles already in the bag just not being that hungry anymore. But at this point in time it does seem that the last few precious levels of intensity that make or break a season are probably missing from both Lewis and Mercedes and maybe that is one of the reasons why Red Bull and Max have been able to pull out such a gap in the first few races. Now finally talking about Toto Wolf and the Mercedes squad. It does appear that there's too much on the plate right now. Both the Mercedes seats are up for grabs next season and there's still no clarity on how Mercedes is going to approach this. Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton were unable to come to an agreement for more than one year at the start of the 2021 season. Although it does appear that Hamilton is going to continue with the German team, both the parties are yet to put pen to paper and make it official. Talking about Valtteri Bottas and his future is a slightly tricky proposition. While George Russell, at least in terms of performance, has more than positioned himself as the prime candidate to replace Bottas, the Mercedes team will still need to look at the consequences of signing up Russell and the consequent effect it could, ha could have on team harmony with Hamilton in the next seat. In Bottas, Mercedes has a perfect number to driver, but with Russell, they will have a potential future champion partnering with Hamilton and the, the last time they had that scenario with Rosberg and Hamilton, it became a bit too much for the team and ultimately, if you all remember, it costed them a race at Barcelona in 2016. Please be willing to risk it this time around with Russell. Only time will tell. But the, what this situation has also done is that it's given Toto Wolf an added headache that he would need to tackle throughout the season, focusing on the battle against Red Bull this season as well. These factors, it does make me think whether Mercedes are even in a position to battle Red Bull in a car that does appear to them. And that is why I feel in the 2021 season, 
Red Bull is going to beat Mercedes for the first time in the hybrid era. So these were my views. What do you guys think? Do let me know in the comment section. Please like, share and subscribe if you like the video. And thanks for watching.